World War II brought the world's automotive industry to its knees with new car production coming to an absolute standstill. But what the world did realize is that it needed go anywhere four wheel drive utility vehicles. The Willys Jeep had already proved itself in the theater of war and the British wanted something similar and thus was born the original Land Rover. And this year, on the 30th of April, the legendary automotive Mark turned 70, prompting celebrations all over the world, especially in the United Kingdom. But it's not just the United Kingdom that's celebrating the 70th anniversary of the Land Rover brand, it's also India. Now, yes, we have seen these cars, the modern ones, only very recently in India after the Tata takeover. The country actually has a long and very sort of colourful history with the Land Rover brand and while in some parts of the country these are regarded as thoroughbred classics in some other parts like the one we're in right now these are actually daily drivers now we're in a place called Mani Banjang which is in West Bengal they're going to drive all the way to a place called Sandakfu in classic Land Rovers and then switch to the modern ones and drive back down uh, these things are actually still running on petrol still with the original engines still go up and down the valley all the time every day and still have so much love and care put into it by their owners. Now before we actually show you the drive though, let's take you through a quick history lesson. Now most of you will recognize the classic Land Rover to be that, in that shape and that is of course correct. This is a CD's one. It's got these very iconic swooping fenders, the inset lights, the small little grill in the front, lovely ride, driving light on this too. But there's a rarer one of this, there's a rarer one of this generation. It's called the Lightweight and uh, this actually is one of the first times I've seen one out in the wild. I've seen one in a museum but never seen one in the wild and never seen one being used the way this is. Now these essentially were made so they could fit in the back of planes and be dropped out of aeroplanes and be used for the army. How these have made their way here, nobody really knows. They are the rarest Series 1 Land Rovers, definitely in these parts. About two exist here. My estimate of how many exist in the country, six or seven at the most. And as you can see, the difference between that and this, different headlamps and different grill structure, different squared off fenders too. Pure practicality and of course a narrow body as compared to the standard one. So, Little tidbit of history, little difference and definitely a much, much rarer car than compared to a normal Series 1. Mani Banjang to Sandakfu is a legendary trail for off-roaders in India. 30 kilometers long but going from 6,600 feet to a smidge over 12,000 feet in just under 3 hours the trail takes a toll on both man and machine. It is narrow, rocky, muddy and outright tricky in any car, let alone cars that are over 50 years old. Now the owner of this Series 1 Land Rover has given me the keys to his car for a few minutes. Let me have a bit of a unplugged experience of the car on the trail. Now I have driven a Series 1 before on the road, never driven it on a trail and this, for somebody like me who loves classic cars, is pure bucket list stuff. It does shake, <laughs> it does shake you around a little bit and there are no safety features, there is no seat belt of course, these cars never came with one. There is no crash protection and the door is just right here, it's a metal door, sliding window too. So in terms of purity of experience off-road, this is as pure as it gets without actually walking. They are very, very easy to drive though, surprisingly, considering the fact that they do look menacing and they do, do look difficult. They aren't. Everything is super direct. The steering is extremely light. And considering the fact that you've got those ridiculously good off-road tyres on this, the narrow tread ones, 
and the fact that you've got a low end gearbox just makes this a walk in the park, a literal walk in the park for something like this. It is one of the greatest cars ever made. There is no question of a doubt there. And now I've driven one on a trail in India. This is the kind of stuff that automotive journalists do get to enjoy and make everybody jealous with. <laughs> 45 degree climbs, countless hairpin switchbacks and rocks the size of large watermelons, the trail threw everything it could at us. But the series one soldiered on and on. After all, these do go up and down these trails at least three to four times a day, often carrying upwards of six to eight passengers or over 700 kilos of cargo. This is unbelievable. This is so much fun. <laughs> I know you're being shaken uh, behind there. Uh, Azam, thank you for bearing with me with this. But this is just unbelievably good fun. I don't remember the last time I had this much fun going this slow and having this big a smile on my face. And as we reached the top, it was time to take a break, swap cars and get into the new discovery. So, we've uh, reached the crest. Over 12,500 feet. Uh, it's, it was really cold, that's why I had my jacket on. But now we're going to go back down in relative comfort. I've got the heated seats on in the Discovery. I've got the temperature set just right at about 18 and a half degrees. Perfect weather. And now I'm going to drive this back down the same trail that we drove back up earlier up in with a whole bunch of uh, electric gadgetry helping me drive too. So you've got a whole bunch of software and of course the Discovery does pack a whole bunch of hardware too. Is it going to be easier? Is it going to be more difficult? Well, we'll find out. While the Series 1 might be more fun, the Disco certainly makes this trail a lot easier. The only thing you really have to worry about is its sheer size, especially when encountering oncoming traffic. But then, it does pack features like driver assist cameras, which help you go right till that edge. While the Series 1 and the Discovery might have an age gap of over half a century between them, their purposes are a little different and yet so similar. While the modern Land Rovers offer oodles of luxury, the older cars are as practical as scissors. But the one thing, the one thing that they do really well is perform off-road. <laughs> 